All right. And welcome to this show. Today, we're going to be talking about Make Code for Macrobit. Here in Seattle, my name is Pelly. I work for Microsoft Research in the Make Code team. And with me, we have Emil. Emil. Get the, the keyboard, Emil. All right, so we've been going through a lot of the lessons. Just get straight to it. And uh, today we're going to be building Emil a stopwatch. So if you want to follow along, you can go to makecode.microbit.org. You'll see the links in the video. And if you're watching this on YouTube, you can right click two times on the video and select picture in picture, and you'll be able to tag along as well. All right, so uh, stopwatch is a tool. So let's go back, let's go there. First stopwatch. One. What is a stopwatch? Um, like yeah. a timing. Timer, and you could measure start time. Start and stop it. Start and stop it. Yeah, it's very useful. And the microbit can measure time very precisely. So we can, can definitely build a cool little tool there. And be master of time. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. The project turns a microbit into simple stopwatch. Press A to start the timer. Press B to display the lapsed seconds. Okay. Okay. Right, so we're uh, we're gonna use buttons. I don't think we're gonna need those. Let's zoom in a bit. All right. Okay, so we are using uh, an input for uh, for the button A. That's that's business as usual. And now we're gonna use this thing called running time. That's something we haven't covered yet. Okay, so. You we're going to create a variable. So the, the trick, if you basically you have to remember when you click start. And the micro bit, the micro bit doesn't have a clock. Like, it doesn't know that it's 9.03 a.m. right now. But it knows how many milliseconds have elapsed since it turned on. Yeah. That's why we call it writing time. So it doesn't tell you the hour of the day. It tells you how long the microbit has been running. And we start that in a variable. Create the variable. Input we got it. More. That was nice and easy. And now we're going to handle. So remember, button, button A starts the countdown, and button B shows you the time. Now, before you go to the next hint, how would you figure out the time that has been elapsed? I know the hint is going to give it to you. The next step is going to do it for you. Okay, you could do a show number. And you think that's going to work? What is start? Oh, there's a bit of math there. Start is the running time. Okay, let me show you on a, on a piece of paper. And you go to... Um, Four? Yep. Okay. So, get some light here. All right. Did I do it right? Yeah, you did it right. So, imagine this is, you know, the line of time, and we've got dinosaurs here. Right? So, that's the past. And in the future, we have microbits. <laughs> <laughs> Little microbits. So, that's really a weird microbits. <laughs> okay. So, when you press A, We store a value and start. So this is start. Let's say we store ten, and we store what's called a you know, that's ten. That's the running time, and then time goes on, and then we arrive at I don't know time twenty, and then we press button B. Schmings. How do you know how much time elapsed? Uh, you read it. You read the variable. So what you're gonna read is ten. Oh wait, let me let me do another number. You read the Let's variable. say we are one hundred. How long happened? What's the value of this question mark? How long? Start. How many? 
star is a variable. So star is a variable, but how do I know, how do I compute this? Uh, show number star. Well, that's going to show you 10. What I want is how many years have happened, or milliseconds in this case, between 10 and 100. What would that be? Oh, t how do you get 50? I don't know. I just guess. Yeah, okay. Now, if you wouldn't do a guess, what you could say is like, oh, it's, you know, it's 100 minus 10, maybe. Oh, yeah, 90. Yeah. So it's 100 minus 10. 10, which happens to be whatever we have in start. And that's kind of the idea of the math behind this, this uh, beautiful stopwatch. Is that we start a time on A, we start a time on B, and then we do the difference between the two and we get how many milliseconds last. All right, let's take a look at the code. So let's see. Uh, let's go to the next step. Add code to compute the difference between the running time and the value time that should be start. This is the elapsed milliseconds since pressing button A. All right, so let's create a new variable. No, no, no it's the same variable. No, it's called elapsed. elapsed. It's good. Variables are free. You can create as many as you want. They're really helpful. And we're going to put that into the, yeah. Not like this. Yeah, let's leave it aside. And so what isn't we that, want to do. Isn't that simple, though? We just, uh, okay. Show start? Yeah. Well, you want to test it? Yeah. Let's, let's go into uh, the simulator and see what it does. Seventy-four, seven forty-eight. Let's More do it seconds. again. Eight forty-eight miles. Gotta try again. That was eight seconds, right? One, One six nine nine. Five. Sixteen seconds. I don't know if that was sixteen seconds. Well, it's again. What is running time? It's <coughs> the time since the microbit has been running. So if I reset the simulator and press A as fast as possible, it's going to be a small number. 916, like less than a second. Now, look, if I press again, it's still the same. <laughs> so that logic has a problem. Okay. Well, so we, we want to compute the lapse time. When you think about it, about your number list, it's really the difference between the time you measure at two different points. I think we did it. Does that make any sense to you? Did my drawing kind of confuse you? Maybe I should redraw with, with a better microbit. The microbit was confusing. This is correct. Imagine, imagine this is a microbit and it counts. Time goes on. So you start at zero and then you go, and then you measure start. Let's say I have a thousand. And then time goes on and you measure. He doesn't want to show it. Oh, well, look at your code. Oh, then we're going to do the show number. Oh, yeah. Now, here's the thing. This is milliseconds. So let's show a lapse. Let's see how this works. Wait, first, don't we have to... Oh, you're going to show zero here. That's yeah. not good. Show elapse. Let's just show elapse right now. Let's see. All right, so if we show elapsed... One, one, zero, four. One, Eleven seconds? No, one second and yeah. 104 moments. Now try again. Yeah, that seems correct. See, it keeps... 
it, the, the counter the, the stopwatch doesn't it's like it's giving you a lap time yeah it doesn't stop it doesn't stop which is good but the problem is uh it's kind of hard to think in milliseconds yeah so oh, yeah. we are gonna uh use a bit of math and what we're gonna do is gonna divide elapse by a thousand. Don't we have to put like integer? Because no. look. Integer division. And it's not there in the drop down? Ooh. Oh, that's a bug. That's very unfortunate. Oh well, let's use that one. So we'll get a lot of Maybe decimal. Maybe it's in square root. Oh yeah, it is in square root. Actually, great spot. Well, that's well, that was a great improvisation, Emil. Now, what is the difference between division and integer division? Um, integer division, you make everything like, I don't know. I, don't, I, I, I kind of forget integers when I'm doing that. You just uh, drop everything after the, in the decimals. Oh, okay. It's the division you do in elementary. I forget it. I, I, I yeah, always... we've been at home for a month now. <laughs> So we're just gonna was just and let's try it. Let's try it in the simulator. We're just not gonna show the digit after the dot, the decimal digits. So we get like integer seconds. Two. I'll leave it. Okay, so let's clear let's press A and then count to five. One, two, two three, three, four, five. Yeah. That's kind of about about right. Okay. It might have been four point nine. Yeah, but we lost that. Okay, we can divide it by 715. Let's see what happens. Yeah, but that then you really don't know what it <laughs> what is your time. <laughs> Let's keep it at a thousand. This makes sense. We turn milliseconds into seconds. It's Actually. not the most precise stopwatch. It's a bit depressing. Why? <laughs> Just to uh, introduce some error. Yes. Yeah. How about we try it on the micro bit and see what this does? Oh, we're gonna take off so we picture. click download, right click on the green button, yeah, and we save the link as on the micro bit drive. Is there a micro bit connected? Mm -hmm. And we're going to the image. Is it deploying? I think. Um, I think it's downloaded. You're it's it's kind of just, oh, okay. It's kind of just doing that. And you reset it? Uh, maybe the plug's not oh, all the way in. No, the plug doesn't matter. And you're out the wind. It's Try just, to stay in the image. There we go. Can you reset it? I don't think you, did you save it to the micro bit? Probably. <laughs> no, I think no, I did not. No, you didn't. Me. You save it to the C drive. <laughs> Okay, it's working. You're uh, outside the image. Yeah, I know. All right. Now it's transferred. All right. So how do we? Let's let's bring it back, Zilli. You're. You have to stay in the in the area here. <laughs> Hold on, it. Zero. Wait. Okay. Click A. And then let's wait five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, those were fast seconds. Yeah. Okay. Now stop it. Oh, six seconds, see? It's kind of working. All right. Hey, right, we've got a stopwatch. It's pretty basic, but I think we can improve it. What else do we have? Hmm, I mean, we have a bit more in the tutorial. Oh, that's testing in the simulator, and that's download. So we did it. All right, how do we unimprove this? I don't know. It's math, so. No, it's not math, it's a stopwatch. It's, so first of all, I think we should tell, when we press A, we should do some kind of display that tells the person that, you know, the timer has started. Okay. So let's show some kind of image when, when A has been pressed. How will people know that image? We can show string. What? We can do a show string. Or an icon? No, a string. Okay. Actually, that would be too long because the microbit would. Could we do the microbit would start after the string? Yeah. Well, no, because you want to click. Then the moment you you click it, 
you want the, the star to start. Okay, so... So you want to either do show string or show icon right after storing. Show right after on button A. Now the priming, okay. Let's see. One of the issues you're gonna face doing that is that show icon is like half a second. You wanna move it under start. Yeah. Can you move on button B? Let's move it out. All right, so now when you press A, it starts and we should have some kind of uh, Checkered? Yeah. Yeah, there we go. Now the other problem is that it's not really, it doesn't look like it's alive. So yeah. I think we should have some kind of animation that like, goes on. Like just a dot that's fine. Yeah, just a dot. We have the toggle. All right, so I think we need a forever loop on the side. And then can you, let's see. Can you, um, like, if you re-toggle it, does it go away? Yeah, it goes on, off, on, off. So what we can do is in the in the forever loop, it's in basic. Yeah. We can toggle it. And you want to go too fast. <laughs> okay. Um, so it's really blinking as fast as it can right now, which is not good. Let's center it. That's cool. That's a good idea. How about blinking a little bit less fast? So we can pause in between the, the blinkers. So if you go in basic, there's a pause button. Yeah. All right, so how, how much pause do you want? The forever loop has a very tiny pause built in, around 20 milliseconds. Um, but we could pause, we could do, yeah, that's good. All right. Don't we want like, well, so it has like around 20 milliseconds? And we could do, that's like a second. Yeah. I like half second. Let's do 480. All right, let's see. So there's one thing that I don't like is that it's actually blinking when it's not measuring. Yeah. Now, one thing we know, so we could do an if for sure, and we should only blink when we know the program is, is actually yeah. measuring. So how would we test that? Now, what would be the condition? Um, let's see. Input? Well, let's think about our program. So, button A is pressed. Mm, yeah, but it's only pressed a tiny bit amount of time when you start. No, and then when button B is pressed. So one thing you know is that, hold on. When button A is pressed, that's actually a good hint. You are changing the state of start. You're storing a number in start. Mm -hmm. And the number is always zero by default. Yeah. But when you store a number, it's going to be non-zero. Okay. So it's time flows. So how would we translate that into code? The thing we know is that after pressing A, start is going to be non-zero. Or you know what we could do? We could add a variable. Okay. How about we add a variable that tells us that we've started? What do we name it? Started. Started. Start education. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we have a variable and we're going to set it to true when we click A. When we click A. 
I think if you go in logic, yeah. we're going to record the, the fact that we're actually running. Schlinks, yes. And now you can use that variable. Here? The variable, not that's yeah. not the variable. Yeah. See how, how, yeah, it's round, but it'll get in. It squeezes. Okay, let's look at the simulator. <coughs> so it doesn't blink, but as soon as you press A, it starts blinking. There's this checkerboard. Yeah, it's cool. And then when you press B, it keeps <laughs> blinking. <laughs> okay. okay, so Can what we, we have, we should um, maybe stop the thing when we are in B. We already have it. Let's try that. I don't think it's going to solve your issue. Why not? Unbutton me press runs only once. Your forever loop keeps running. Um, let's see. You could do the same as you did. So if you could bring it back to, let's bring it back here so we see everything together. All right, so. If you think about what you're doing in button A, you could do the exact opposite in button B. So in button A, um. you say, oh, I'm running, you know. Mm. <clears throat> what about what we could do the inverse in button B? So, let's see. If we set started to true, we could set started to Now, I would do it before shot number because it's, it's going to have time to blink while you're showing the number. All right. See that? And the forever loop will stop running, right? Let's do the, you know what? Let's zoom out and do the slug, the slow-mo. It's going to be a good... Slow-mo the slug? Slow-mo the slug. All right, let's go slow-mo. Now, if you see the slow-mo, it is constantly running forever and as soon as you press a it goes into the if because started is true and then when you press b oh, perfect it's perfect it shows you the number and you know the seconds you have uh -huh. we've really improved it here as far as usability for the user and could we do digits like a number like getting the milliseconds so could we do six dot oh yeah we could all right so let's let's collapse the simulator so we divide this by like 500 <laughs> no well if you think about it what we've done is the division but there's another thing called the remainder right oh yeah remainder is that in math oh yeah that's a whole lot of math Okay, so let's uh, let's show a dot. I think yeah. in basic we can do show string. Oh, basic, show string. And we show a dot, and then we're gonna compute the remainder of. Wait, here? Yeah. Dot. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and then what we want to do is do another show number and do and compute and show the remainder of elapsed divided by a thousand. So do another show number, okay. We'll just duplicate the one, there you go. Now, let's see. I think it's gonna be in the other toolbar. It's gonna be this? It's... Not integer divide? Oh. No, that's not. Remainder. It's, it must be in that drop down. Oh, remainder off, yeah. There you go. Nope. Nope. <laughs> nope. Just get rid of the integer. I'm trying, but he like got to with the other one. Yeah, that one in. 
Yeah, get out of here. This one, so elapse, the remainder of elapse. Divide by a thousand? Yeah. Then that leaves you with the milliseconds. Let's see. All right. See that. It's going, it's going. 6.692. Okay. I think if we divide it by a hundred. Where's our checkerboard? I think you, what do you want, just the hundreds of a second? Seven point. You want the hundreds of a second? Yeah, I think that's better. And I know if you have a whole four numbers. I think you may want to divide it by. A thousand? If we divide it by a hundred, we get the point seventeen, which is what's usually used. Really? Yeah, you don't really use. Unless it's like so, that's milliseconds. Hundredth of a second, and tenth of a second. And oh. should it be like this? Ten thousand? Oh, let's see. Oh, we're in student tracing. Mm -hmm. 1.1454. Okay, I think we could put a couple more zeros in. I think most, Point one most stopwatch five give you... 7, 6. Most stopwatches just... They give you thousands. No, they give you a hundred. They do? Yeah. Nobody uses a thousandth of a second. All right. Well, that's our stopwatch for today. Let's put it on the micro bit and let's test it out. Download. Download. And if I click, save link as. All right. Let's go to the micro bit. All right. So let's count in our heads. I'm gonna count. Did you start it? What? Hold on. I'm gonna get it? my. I'm gonna get my countdown. I'm gonna check with the phone. So I have the phone here. I'm going to start at the same time. All right. Three, two, one, start. I'm started. And three, three two, two, one, one stop. stop. Oh, I didn't see the first number. 6.11 and I got 6.46. So we're pretty close. Oh, I think this works. I think I stopped a bit before you. Yeah, you did a full start. <laughs> I ended all right. Well, that's for, that's it for today, folks. We've got we went through this uh, little tool that's the stopwatch. It's useful to do a whole bunch of things if you want to run around the kitchen and in the living room faster than your brothers and sisters. You can use the Mechabit stopwatch to see who's the king. Yep. Or the queen. And uh, we'll be back uh, tomorrow for more uh, make code activities. Well, not tomorrow. Tomorrow's the weekend. On Monday. On Monday.